So, welcome along to episode two of Oz Longboarding, and today it's Meet the Shaper. So, of course, we've got our uh, usual panel. Uh, we're missing one, but we got one back, so uh, we've, we've evened out again. But uh, welcome along wherever you're watching around the world to find out all that's going on in Australian longboarding. So, well, let's do the lap of the country, and we'll start at the bottom of the country this time around. Nathan Riverland from Victoria, how are you, buddy? Yeah, good, Wakesy. How you going? Yeah, mate, good, good. Did you get some waves during the week? Yeah, um, it's been pretty good. We had another good run of waves this week, um, especially the last few days. We've had um, northerlies and northwesterlies, which are offshore for everywhere. So it's been really good. I've been, yeah, ears are full of salt water. I'm just like, ooh. <laughs> good. good stuff, mate. Oh, I actually had a little surf. I've got a bad back at the moment, but I, I was actually doing my stretches on the beach and thought I wouldn't actually be able to get to my feet. It's pretty bad, but I managed to drag myself out of my little... Uh, my five-two mini Simmons, actually, Steve Del Rosso uh, made the original computer shape that that five-two came off of, and uh, we'll talk to Stevie in just a little moment about that. But so yeah, we've got a couple of waves, and some unusual waves were breaking. We got our once-in-a-decade storm that we seem to have about every two or three years, but uh, it was 120 kilometer an hour winds, houses getting knocked over, and all the rest of it. So pretty exciting uh, week in WA. Now in Sydney, Matt Chinoski, g'day, buddy. G'day, Weeksy. Mate, I know that you got some waves this week. We've seen you all over social media. Tell us a bit about that se session you had with none other than Mr. Kelly Slater down at the Bower. Yeah, an ECL developed uh, off the coast. I saw it brewing from Tassie, actually, um, early last week. And I knew we were going to cop some swell. But the last six months, it's kind of been the story of like a little bit of a hoax. Every time we had any period of over 10 seconds, as soon as it would hit shore, it would bait to about eight or nine which usually equates to pretty wobbly windswell um, and usually smaller than predicted. But this time we had a 10 to 13 second period south swell, which is generally not good. But the Saturday we had relative offshore winds all day, which allowed a lot of bombies and offshore reefs. And you would have seen Kelly getting some barrels and those spots are usually onshore uh, when we get that swell. So that was pretty cool to have a full day of offshore winds and well overhead surf. Sunday woke up, it was actually getting a little bigger, which is great. And then we still had some good waves on Monday. And then, uh, yeah, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we've had really good, uh, slowly declining swell, but some really good banks around, which is really, really comforting. Everyone's really stoked about that. Uh, but yeah, Kelly being out the water. I'd surfed with him about 15 years ago. I was a mega grom and I was on a single fin at Avalon, which is actually where he was staying in the last couple of weeks. And he remembered our session and I reminded, of it, reminded him of it when we were out at Manly at Dead Man's there. And he, he kind of had a vivid memory, which is really cool. He's, he's such a good people person and uh, very respectful and a real gentleman in the lineup. Fantastic. And we might even see if we can get you to bring up one of those photos a bit later on uh, yeah. to show us what you've been getting up to. So skipping around the coast, our usual correspondent from the northern New South Wales beaches in the Byron Bay area, Jack Entwistle, can't join us tonight. He had a work-related function to go to this evening. Well, so he says he might just be a little bit surfed out, but uh, a bit further up the coast, just right on the border, Sean McEwen, mate, how's things been on the northern New South Wales, southern Queensland coast? Mate, we have had a really, real good run of swell uh, earlier in the week. It's been solid on the points. Uh, crowd's been uh, shoulder to shoulder. Hasn't been any social distancing happening at all. But, uh, yeah, to be expected, I guess, and I don't think... Uh, COVID-19 can live in salt water anyway. Um, <laughs> Stay the, safe out there. Yeah. Oh, but everyone's been having a really good time. Uh, Kira's been really good earlier in the week. Uh, it's a bit smaller the last day or two. Uh, a lot of sand everywhere. They tell me, even down at Byron, there's a lot of sand around uh, what it goes, Clarks and that. Uh, they tell me the better waves have been along the Longal. But, uh, of course, that misses a lot of the swell with so much southerly in it. But, uh, hey, it's, it's been good. Water's warm, a bit fresh in the mornings, but uh, most days the sun's beating down by about 9 o'clock in the morning, and it's been a good, good time of year. Nice one. And I suppose there's still a few COVID restrictions keeping everyone in their local areas. But um, 
Gold Coast, I know, has been getting some great waves. And I also know from photographic evidence on the Facebook feed that Kira Molnar up on the Sunshine Coast. Kira, you've been getting some surf too, mate. Yeah, we've had some epic waves, actually. Um, so it's been like offshore pretty much since Friday last week through the weekend. We had some good swell um, hitting, especially the open beaches here have been really good. Anytime there's that really nice southwest wind, everyone gets out like sunshine through to Marcus and Coolum and that. Um, and I actually headed down Watala Way, which was pumping down there as well as a bit more of a shorey sort of hollow wave. And yeah, we've We've just been so lucky, except for today. It just hit today and it went southerly and flat. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. At least that, that way it means uh, you made your way onto the show today, which is great. But uh, yeah. our special guest just there adjusting his iPad, uh, right, well, smack bang in the middle of the Gold Coast in Corumban. Welcome to Oz Longboarding, Mr. Steve Del Rosso from Clearwater Surfboards. How are you, Del Boy? Good, thanks, Weetzi. Good to be on the show, mate. Great to have you on board. And we know he's getting serious because he's got his specs on. So, Steve, uh, have you been getting any surf lately, mate? I know you've been punching out the boards. Have you been getting any waves? Yeah, this, uh, the past two weeks has been awesome here. I've been just surfing the local at the alley. And um, as uh, Sean said too, mate, there's a lot of sand around. And um, the alley's sort of been breaking a bit like a, a green mount snapper sort of combination. So it's uh, running all the way through to Palm Beach some days, especially on the big days. Um, the lacy section was really good, so yeah, had had a, had a lot of fun and and some size as well, which was awesome to see, especially this time of year. Yeah, good stuff. It looks like everyone's been getting some solid waves. It's been huge over here, and I think we've got four and a half, five meter swells. We had nine meter swells last weekend, so um, certainly good to see things settle down a bit. Now we've got Stevie on this time around, folks, to answer some questions from our viewers. You may have noticed from the Facebook page that uh, we've. We're going to have a special guest on each week and this week we're going to talk about board design and specifically longboard design of course and we've got a few great questions that have funneled in from a few of our viewers but uh stevie are you ready to go mate answer some questions about yeah. longboard? far away buddy all right so first of all just give us a bit of a background about yourself as far as your shaping history i, I first met you in western australia uh, obviously you've been around for a long time just start us from the beginning mate who taught you how to shape and how did you learn your craft yeah, learned a lot off of um, yeah, Bert Berger in the early days. Um, you know, I worked with Bert uh, back in Dunsborough days in the 80s. And uh, then uh, I, was, as, I was a professional fisherman for a lot of years as well. So um, I was back and forth between boards and uh, fishing. And uh, yeah, then I spent a lot of time with Cole Adams, which was really, really good. Cole was, uh, as every West Australian knows, he is uh, definitely, uh, I reckon he's most underrated show in the world, to be honest. Um, <laughs> He, he was, uh, you know, perfect at everything he did and did all the pros boards through the 80s. And uh, so I spent a lot of time with Cole, um, brought Clearwater in uh, 97 and uh, uh, pretty well much, uh, yeah, uh, worked in Rockingham at the factory there, which was quite, uh, quite a good spot at the time with all the bogans and, all, all, uh, you know, met a lot of good people there and we had a lot of good fun too, you know, so some crazy parties and... Uh, and uh, and uh, just serving the local waves around Mandra and uh, Surf Beach Secret Harbour. So, um, uh, yeah, so I had the factory there for most probably 12, 15 years and then uh, got the opportunity to come to the Gold Coast uh, and work at base. So my first job there was to um, help uh, get all the boards for Simon and uh, Darren onto computer because uh, they were, uh, needed to change it to a better machine and um, they were getting a lot of people in trying to help them uh, to get their files uh, set up properly and accurately. And um, Murray did a shaping stint to WA, which I think that was one of the first times I met you. Yes. And, uh, and he could see that um, I give him a hand with some files, uh, cleaned them up, got his boards looking, be uh, you know, I wouldn't say better, but um, just sorted all his issues out. And he was like, oh, I can't get this done on the Gold Coast. So that's why I came to base to uh, set up the machines and uh, help the guys with the computer design. So, um, and that was really good too because, uh, you know, I learned a lot of Darren and Simon in that sense, especially uh, watching uh, Darren at the time. He had Steph and Mick and, uh, you know, a lot of high-profile high, high, high profile surfers in the short boards and, um, you know, just seeing uh, the energy that was going into the boards. And then with Simon, you know, an old legend. And, um, you know, I learned, uh, you know, especially when I was doing his files, he, he was really good. So learning more about the idiosyncrasies of board design and trying to get them across on the computer. So 
Uh, so I was there for four years and um, pretty much so I set up on my own uh, uh, for the past, well, Jeb's losing count now. <laughs> Tom's going to say quick. Uh, most probably been doing my own thing for, uh, gee, for about six, seven years now on the Gold Coast. So, um, uh, but I was keeping a low profile. I was pretty busy with just the customers I had and um, I wasn't really trying to throw things out there. And um, yeah, and, uh, and here I am today. I've got a shop in Crumburn and uh, yeah, uh, you know, working with a lot of good surface, Clint S, especially at the moment. And um, yeah, enjoying life on the Gold Coast, mate. Yep. And uh, gee, I tell you what, mate, your shop in uh, Secret Harbour in Western Australia looks amazing. It's one of the best looking surf shops I've been into in a long time. Is that your design or is that Nat? A uh, bit of a bit of all of us, mate. Um, we just yeah did a lot of research. Oh, just had you drop out. <laughs> Anyone else dropped out? Is that just Stevie? I don't know. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's just like a real show. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, hang on, we'll just see if we can get Stevie back. But uh, in Tell the us meantime, a little bit about the shop, Weeksy. What's the shop look like in WA? Okay, so the. Um, the Clearwater Shop in West Oz, it's in, inside a uh, shopping centre. So I used to have the shop right on the beach at yeah. Secret Harbour, uh, walking straight out of the shop onto the sand, literally, and uh, then moved into the big shopping centre nearby. There's been a couple of little moves, but it's just really clean. Um, I've oh, lost, lost you there for a sec, mate. Back, back. yeah. It's all good. We just... Back. <laughs> what happened I think I might... Actually, I might even go through my phone. I've got a, I took some photos because it looks so nice down there. Just how would you describe it, Steve? Very clean, very... Um, Sort of uh, easy to see what's going on. Yeah, in the shop. Yeah, 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 mate. Yeah, yeah. That's what we wanted to do. Just make it a bit easy for people to uh, come in and easy to walk around. Um, and uh, yeah, keep it clean and basic. You know, um, sometimes uh, I think uh, things are a bit better like that. Makes it easy for people to go through. So yeah, we just got a lot of good ideas from a lot of other shops as well. You know, so can't take it all for uh, for granted if you know what I mean. And uh, yeah, so, yeah, all we want to do is just make it easy and keep it clean and basic, yeah. Yeah, my grandfather used to say, a wise man learns from his mistakes, a very wise man learns from other people's mistakes. So uh, choosing the best of the shops is the way to go. Now then, yeah. we're, obviously, we're going to focus specifically on longboarding. Obviously, you've worked with some of the best shortboarders and shortboard shapers in the world, but today you're on Oz Longboarding, so it's all about longboards. Now, Sean McEwen, I believe you've got a viewer question from the Facebook page for Steve. Yeah, so I've got one here from um, Andy uh, Grantham. He's actually been to, he's a shortboarder that loves helping out with the longboards. He's been our site manager at, at the events for over 10 years or nearly 15 years now. And he wanted to know when I find the question. Um, okay, Delboy, what do you prefer to shape, logs or modern high performance longboards? Bit of everything, um, to be honest, Sean. I do enjoy high performance longboards because uh, don't, I think it's an area that's sort of been a little bit untouched and uh, it can be more fine tuned. So, um, but I must admit, I've been shaping more logs than ever before. Um, and uh, so, it's a bit of both, mate. Um, the logs are definitely uh, take a lot longer to shape, but the high performance sort of, for me, sort of comes out very, very easy when I'm doing them. Nice one. And so we've got a couple of people already commenting on the live stream feed. I'm guess, uh, Steve, I'm guessing that uh, Zoltan Koloski is a friend of yours? Ah, uh, crispy. He just jumped man. on and reckons you're having a sneaky beer break. <laughs> so, <laughs> he knows me too well. <laughs> and I, who's Julie? Is that your mum, Nathan, or sister? Or? Yeah, that's my mum. <laughs> oh, hi, hi, Nathan's hey, mum. I'm uh, pretty uh, sure my mum's there too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is Molna. Um, great to see the longboarding community coming together. And one person who's been particularly excited about uh, having this Oz Longboarding podcast is from your neck of the woods, Matt Chinoski. We've got uh, Michael Cottier. Uh, oh. He's frothing about longboarders coming back. Did you see his question he put up this afternoon? It was probably just before you came on. No, I didn't. All right. So I'll, I'll chuck that one to you, Stevie. So Michael wants to know, when you're doing a boards for heavy waves, so West Australian waves, for example, Hawaii, uh, what design features or elements do you put into that longboard? And his follow-up question is, what size fins do you recommend for big, heavy waves? 
Yeah, um, I'll, I'll, I'll say it in short boards first. Um, pretty well much, uh, which really are long boards, <laughs> especially with what, what uh, Mick Corbs and a lot of the boys are riding nowadays and in Oceania waves. So um, pretty much I'm keeping the volume uh, forward, um, pulled in tails so they get the, the bite and the uh, hold and drive. Um, uh, fins, pretty much thrusters or quads. Quads are faster, thrusters are more manoeuvrable. Um, so, uh, and just V bottoms with a little bit of concave under the front foot, you know, to get a bit of projection in case we've got a fast one to really race. Um, but, and, and, and rocker, but the rocker depends on where you surf, actually. I'm finding if you're uh, surfing an oceanic wave, it doesn't have to be too flat, but if you're surfing a more of a, a jaws type, I suppose you need that little bit more rocker. Um, but in longboards, mate, um, the HPs handle anything. And as weeks you remember a surf we had at the LT titles years ago at Yarlinga. Um, gee, because I don't want to make a call how big it was, but when one wave closes out the bay, <laughs> um, you remember that yeah. one well, I'm sure. Yeah, that was a great yeah, session. I mean, responsible. And that's an interesting, and that, I guess maybe that's where the question comes from, from, from Michael, because he was there for that national titles as well. And I remember that week we had 27 boards broken during heats. And then there was all the free surf boards as well, but uh, not one single clear water was broken. No, so I was glassing them pretty strong because I knew I know they're yelling up very, very well. And I knew it was going to be on that time of year, as you know, too, mate. It's always got the size and, uh, and the offshores. So, um, yeah, but that, that swell caught, caught me by surprise. You know, but that's, some of them waves have been 15 feet that day. <laughs> You know, it's a good four or five times overhead. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, for anyone who's not from Western Australia or Hawaii, 15 feet means it was about 40 foot up the front of it. And uh, it was probably, yeah. we had competitors wanting to fill in their uh, last Willem Testament before they'd paddle out for their heat. So it was it was legit. Anyone who was there for the WA Nationals will remember that. Kira, well, you're far too young than that, but I bet that you, as a competitive longboarder, you got some questions for Steve with regards to uh, longboard design. Um. Yeah, actually. Um, what do you um, what do you think about the single fins compared to the thruster fins? And have you ever shaped any more like sort of quad setups on the HP longboards? Yes, I did do a lot of quads uh, about four or five years ago, um, and uh, I found they're very fast. Um, they actually seem a bit more looser on a longboard than a shortboard, um, which was good, but. Yeah. Thrusters, I found, felt better in, in the wave. You know, you could, you could feel the wave. With a quad, you can't feel the wave so much, I found. Yeah. And, um, and single fins, uh, to be honest, I've always found they're good in small waves. And, um, and Mark McNamara put me on that years ago, you know, so you just get more pivot out of a single fin, than, especially on the smaller stuff, than, uh, you know, a thruster. But thrusters really just serving a nice beach break, especially WA where I'm from. Uh, you know, they're a bit more suckier and hollower. The thrusters, you can't beat on a beach break or a solid reef break like what me and Weeks were talking about it yelling up. Um, but I am riding a lot more logs now. Um, so um, it's been interesting going down that path. I used to have a lot of uh, a really big old surfboard collection um, mm -hmm. many, many years ago. So I was riding a lot of old school boards and um, I sort of found, um, I don't want to copy them because I found uh, they were yeah, even Midget said it to me once too. He said they didn't go good. He goes, why would you want to go back there? Um, but uh, so but I am enjoying the logging side of things. I just sort of change them up a little bit. I'm sort of finding the California one suits me a lot more. That okay. Californian style with the, uh, the water tail, water nose, um, with a single fin. They grow great. Um, and would you describe more of the logs that you shape kind of like a little bit more of a progressive log then as opposed to yeah. like old school logs? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I found, um, especially having that old circle collection, I found a lot of the old logs, especially the pig shakes, very flat. Um, they work good in a lot of ways, though, I've got to be honest, like a lot of the log ways, but you can't uh, mix it up. I found, like, um, if you want to surf a, a bit more of a beach break or a little bit of a bigger wave, or they can be a little bit restricting if you want to do it. If you want to do a good turn, you know what I mean? Um, so, uh, yeah, just been making them more progressive, a little bit more rock art. Um, I'm using more concaves in them, which a lot, I don't see too many crew doing it in the logs. Um, I'm running it further back, so you're getting the glide from that more so than the flatness of the rocker. Gotcha. And that's so, like a single concave through the nose that you're talking about? Yeah, and running it right through the board, um, but very subtly through the back half. I'm using chimes more than V to loosen them up, and um, it just allows you to use the rail a lot more as well. 
So, um, but I'm finding, uh, I'm writing a mixed bag of everything in logs. So, um, I've, as I explained to Clint too, and we've had good chats about this, is um, different logs for different waves. So, and different power comparisons as well. So, as you know, being sunny, close off end, when I used to go up there years ago when I first moved to Queensland, I used to struggle so bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit gutless on that. <laughs> Yeah, it used to wig me out. Like, I'd be going, oh, my gosh. You drop in a perfect wave at first point, and you're going, oh, check out this, and you think, oh, here we go. And then you get up the top, and you're like, oh, my gosh, the wave's got underneath me, you know. And WA, you never get that. So, um, you know, I find up there, bigger boards are good and thicker and flatter, definitely. But on the Gold Coast, uh, as you know, it's got a bit more suck and a bit more... So the rocket boards work well. So it just depends on the wave. So I, I like short boards. I'm fine with long boards. So if you... You can't just ride the same board at, this, at different waves. You can have better boards for uh, different waves. So it depends on the conditions too. All right. Thanks for that, Stevie. As a, <laughs> down, hang on, down there. I don't know if you guys have got the same screen as I've got, but Matt Johnson, <laughs> the wax head. I know that you are a proponent of the old school single fin uh, board. How would you react to what Steve just said? Is that sort of fit in tune with what you're doing with your shapers at the moment? Yeah, right board for the right conditions, really. Um, whether it be long or short or mid or whatever, uh, it is important to have a quiver at the end of the day. And that's something I've found. I've worked in the industry since I've been in my early teens and I've seen the evolution of shortboard design actually, uh, you know, go from everyone riding conventional six O's, you know, eight and a quarter, two and a quarter, you know, to shorter, wider boards and people realising uh, in shortboard realm that, uh, a quiver is really beneficial. Um, obviously, just this recent swell, we had a lot of kids out of boards. They didn't know what to ride because all their smaller boards are a little even shorter than they used to be and a little wider. Uh, you know, they're riding like five eights by 19, which you can't even bottom turn on a five foot wave properly, you know, and come off with power. So they're all scratching for their old man, six twos and six fours, you know, old brown rocket out 90s things. Um, but as far as longboarding goes, uh, I think uh, weight, of a board has a lot to do with it. Like I've, I do have a lot of single fins, but just in my car recently, I had, yeah, quad, uh, 20 thrust, couple of thrusters and yeah, a fair few pintail single fins. But the key was the weight, you know, I, I did opt for the single fin when it was um, larger, just because of the, the weight uh, perspective, you know, when it's six foot plus, whatever the fin setup is, I think uh, having the right board suited to those conditions I think weight's got a lot to do with it. And West Oz, Steve, you'd probably... I'm interested to find out what you do with, you know, when you're surfing big Margarets or yelling up or whatever, you've got that chatter down the face, the bigger the wave, yeah. elements, you're, you've got reef, wind, and you've got that, you know, Indian Ocean. It's a different... It's very different to the Gold Coast or the Sunny Coast. Sydney, we get some of those, you know, harsher south swells, but still nothing like West Oz. So how do you, uh, I should say... What's your glassing process when you are shaping a, a high pro for solid waves in WA versus a high pro board, say, on the Gold Coast? Yeah, um, you're right, too, because uh, WA, you do need that weight. Um, always found, even with short boards, too, it's best to have a six ounce on the bottom. Keep, like you said, that wind chatter, you know, um, and little, little chops coming up the face as well when you're dropping in. So... Um, definitely I have them a lot stronger like uh, Weeksy said that's why I didn't have much snappage at yelling up that year I, I just thought I'm just going to glass everything strong and heavy thicker stringers um, because when you as you know too when you go you go faster on a bigger wave so you're going to get the flex um, and I find flex plays a big part too especially in HP long boards um, you're going to get that flex because you've got the speed and the power of the wave so um, we Gold Coast I definitely lighten them up a bit um, but it depends on the style of surfing you're after as well. Um, so if you want to keep it smooth and clean, heavy is always good. But if you want to liven it up, I find light's good on the Gold Coast and Sunny Coast. So, yeah, but you, you were spot on there, Matt. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, I mean, you guys can probably sit there and talk about for hours about the nuances. But speaking about heavy and light, Sean, I think you had a, a, a viewer question from yourself, didn't you, mate? <laughs> 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 yeah, well, I was interested in, um, yeah. Um, Del Boy, you know, both of us have been grazing on a pretty good paddock. We're both <laughs> good and um, I know from oh, when I was surfing all the time competitively and that, it was so hard for um, my shaper to do boards that would suit um, my style of surfing being big. But 
with yourself now, what do you ride to compensate for having an extra weight and that? And, you know, is it changes to not just your thickness and your width, but, um, you know, how much rocker you have, whether you have it a bit flatter so it's faster to pedal. Um, and with yeah, your glass under the guts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> how much fun you have with it. Just so that, uh, yeah, you can get out there and compete with these lightweights like uh, Matty and Nathan. Yeah, it does make a difference, mate. <laughs> I'm, I'm finding I'm getting a lot of the older surfers now, and they, they do like the HPs a bit more, um, which is good. Uh, am I still there, guys? Yeah, mate, you're up. Yeah, well, all right. Yeah, so they uh, they uh, do like the HPs a bit more, the older fellas, and um, especially the bigger fellas, too, I should say, um, you know, because they uh, HP uh, longboard will generate a bit more speed, um, and it helps us out in the sense of, uh, you know, with a log, you know, that they, they do sort of go with the wave and stay with the wave and not speed up. So um, I'm finding a lot of the bigger fellas like the HP boards, so I'm doing, like, full concave setups on them. Um, and definitely the width I'm finding helps and, and thickness, as, as we know. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a funny one as we progress in age and put on the weight. So, but I'm, I'm finding our paddling agility, uh, you lose that too of age as well, um, even when you try to keep it fit, uh, you know, keep, keep them fit. But, um, yeah, so we always need that help. But uh, in my HPs, I keep the entry rock pretty flat and rely a lot more on the tail kick, and that's mainly to keep the glide as we're trying to get into the waves. Um, so and bigger guys will make the rails thicker too. Um, then again, a lot of them like the thinner rails. So it's a, as it's, as I said, it depends on where they're surfing. Um, I find Sunshine Coast uh, definitely a little bit more meat in the rails. Where WA, especially a thinner rail, just allows you to, to bury it easier, easier because you're going a lot faster. And Gold Coast is a half half because you've got the uh, cleaner, you know, cleaner, hot, suckier waves. Nice. And speaking of bigger guys who surf really, really well, I'm just interested to see Hayden Swans just uh, tuned yeah. in. So, g'day, Hayden. Oh, great to see you on board. And uh, I'll just take you off, take you off that spotlight, Stevie, so we're not all yeah. staring at you. But um, so, Swanee surfs amazingly well. He's very light on his toes, and uh, he yeah. gets the nose real easy for a big guy. What would you do for someone like Hayden, who's got that, you know, that the full? hardcore power surfing as well as the really nice controlled nose riding how do you find that balance for someone like Hado who's such an amazing surfer very big um, <laughs> uh, so, um and and i'm getting a lot of uh, friends doing that and i've even uh riding in myself like that too so um you know we're talking nine sixes but they're just big extra big high performance longboards um uh swanee seems to like them because he does surf really alive you know like <laughs> he cracks me up. He, he can he, he, dan he walks like a ballet dancer, but you know then when he wants to throw it on rail, man, he moves tons of water. So um, you know the HPs are really good for him, and um, I'm finding a lot. That's what I mean. The bigger guys do like the HPs because it just helps us get that speed up um, without having to try to work the board. You know what I mean? Um, and uh, and the other thing too of the concaves too just gives creates that little bit of lift as well. So in the HPs, so it does make the uh, you know, get you out of that water a bit to keep that speed up. And I think I've, I've noticed particularly last, or oh, since we had the new changing criteria, the judges are really looking for a lot of the nose to be out of the water. And from a hydrodynamic point of view, I, I find it really interesting how you can move the board further, you know, the planning point further backwards or forwards. So is that something you're working on with Clint, the way it looks on the face of the wave for the judging panel to see? Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, me and Clint have had heaps of chats about that. Um, like uh, Keani, I think if I pronounce that right, the Hawaiian kid. Um, we noticed he was just locking the tails in and, and Macca put me on to this years ago um, with that like scooped out on the deck. Uh, as, as we found out, it's more the tail of a board that helps with that than the nose. Um, so I remember when I used to get a bit of coaching by me, he'd always say, lock the back, lock the tail, and lock the tail, and you know what I mean? So... Um, me and Clint have been focusing on that. Like a lot of our philosophy goes off of what Macca, um, you know, you know what we spent with Macca, you know, when he was with us. And um, uh, yeah, we try to. Uh, and Kiani woke us up to it last year when we we're watching him nose rod. So we're doing a lot with, um, you know, the wider tails um, and uh, and and putting that uh, deck concave in it. You know what I mean? So the water sort of. Um, actually, I've got a board here. I can most probably show. Hopefully, this works. 
Yeah, like this is um this is one Clint just returned actually, and I, I enjoyed writing this one myself. This is a uh, a um this was one of the first. I've done a lot more with a lot more in depth, so you can sort of see um you know through that tail. That one's got this one's very subtle. It's just got that little bit of scoop through there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but um it's got that wide tail. You know, full 50-50 rail there as well. So um, it just it helps the board lock in so you can keep that nose out of the water a bit more, you know what I mean? And you can perch a bit longer. Um, so um, but I threw Clint, um, speaking of different boards, different ways, I threw Clint a, uh, a lot of um, boards that, uh, this year, like heaps of different logs, like heaps and heaps of different ones. So um, this one's a bit of a flatter one. Um, I thought about more sunny coast nooses sort of thing um, and uh, uh, then I've done some uh, like that iconic that's what he was writing last year like very similar outline this one's 10 feet um, that I call that the iconic and um, uh, you know that's what he wrote last year most of the year and we found that went uh, good in a lot of variety of ways uh, it seemed to just suit everything um, and it performs well like that tail the, it just pivots a bit quicker has hold has bite. Um, it's definitely a full 50-50 rail um, and no uh, deck scoop on that one. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, that's a good all-round high-performance sort of log, I could say. That's got the full concave running through. Um, there's another one I just did. Sorry, guys, walking out the back here. Um, <laughs> and um, there's another one I sort of did. But take the phone with me because my internet's running off of that. So I'll give you a quick rundown on this one too. <laughs> So it's a bit hard to see, but we've got the concave running through the nose here and it runs all the way back to, uh, you know, beyond halfway. So that's keeping the glide so if you have a bit more rocker and, uh, and then just using a chime through the... It's a bit hard to see, but I'm using chimes through this part of the board um, to loosen it up and a slight bit of E too with that um, scoop in the tail. But um, I did a 10-footer for Clint. <laughs> Sorry for moving around, guys, but... Uh, Right. We did a 10 footer for Clint and um, we really scooped the tail out and um, this thing freaked us out a bit actually. Um, you got to see it a lot better. Okay. So what we have here whoops, is, um, this is a 10 footer, this is a real big board. This thing's a ripple catching machine. I love this thing myself. Um, sorry guys, I'm gonna put this down. <laughs> Pretty skilled there, holding the phone and holding the board. Yeah. <laughs> Good coordination. That's a beautiful rug, Steve. <laughs> oh, it's awesome, eh? <laughs> I'd say that good. I was about to comment on that. Uh, <laughs> we better try to hipster it up a bit. Um, <laughs> so this is a 10-footer here, and you can see there, that one there, the scoop on that. Oh, wow. That, yeah. that, that looks a lot like the tails on the uh, Takayama boards we saw at Noosa. Exactly. Yeah. Nice tail. Yeah. That's yeah, so um, we, we uh, found thing. that was that was amazing, <laughs> um, especially for locking it in. Um, Shape has got some good footage of Clint riding this board, and um, yeah, it's quite mind blowing actually. I can't wait till they release it. Um, and as you can see, it's got the full fifty fifty. So this one really, really locked in. Um, I found I could nose ride this myself pretty good. <laughs> I found it very easy to get tens on. Oh, give me one of them, Steve. Yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> It's a ripple catching machine. That's one thing that freaked me right out about that board. Um, so, uh, you know, so it's... Um, hey, Steve, what's yeah, the, um, the nose rocker and tail rockers you're putting into those longer um, nose riders that you're making for Clint? Because that one there, I know the, the concave accentuates the rocker, but it looked like it did have quite a bit of entry rocker. It does. Yes, it does. Um, and that's the other thing we are saying, like as Weeks, you said with the judging as well, like they, they seem to like you when you're on the nose. You know, especially Carney, he was always like way out of the water because his tail's locked in. So we uh, kept a bit more rocker in it. So um, I surfed this, <laughs> actually this 10 footer, and I've never done that before. This handle's about six feet because um, the rocker in the nose, like you were saying, um, it, uh, it can just handle any drop. And um, so it's quite a bit. I don't know on dimension wise because um, I, I go on look a lot, uh, Matt. Um, I'm finding uh, if it looks too rocket, it's too rocket. And if it doesn't, it, you get away with it. You know what I mean? It's sort of, um, uh, so I've never really done the measurements on it, but you can sort of see it there. That yeah, right. So is that yeah. a full, that, that's a full hand shape then, is it, Steve, rather than being off the computer? Uh, no, computer everything now, buddy. I, I, I've got that uh, good with the, the computer now. I can do whatever I want. 
it's okay. it's not a problem. So you're not because you, I know from watching, I've had the pleasure of sitting there and watching a board from scratch uh, come out of your mind and onto the computer. So you're basically just dragging until it looks right. And you, one thing you, you pointed out to me, which I wasn't aware of, which has become very clear after you mentioned it, is the fact that um, what it looks like on the computer doesn't necessarily translate to how it comes out in real life. Yes. So, how long did it take yes. you before you could actually see that difference just within the program? Yeah, um, that's funny. I did a bit of a graveyard of blanks in the early days. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's funny. Like, it looks can look good on the computer sometimes, but um, it's not when you cut it. Um, so, but over the years, I've just worked out... Um, it's, it's funny, I can sort of see it without... It, uh, I can see it when it's not looking the same on the computer, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Just from experience of doing it, because I, I think I brought one of the first of the APS machines, and um, so I've had the machines for gosh, it'd be nearly twenty years now. So um, I was one of the first, so I got to play with it, and I think I was one of the first that started cutting longboards uh, properly on them, because I know a lot of people were struggling. That tail looks sick. I know yeah. uh, Wayne Dean, another um, legend of our sport, who's passed. He used to always say that last six inches of the tail determines whether or not it will be a nose rider, and that one to me looks like yeah. it's top riding. Oh, it was freaky. Like, um, I, I just wish um, I could get the footage. Dan Scott shot it off Clint riding it. It was at Byron. It was about a four-foot day, too. And, mate, some of the, the, the nose riding he was doing, he could do whatever he wanted, you know, the perch tans. And that was sort of a bit Keanu spoiled, like, like Matt Michael Takayama. You can see it's more of a Californian uh, out, outline, Matt, as you know, your boards well. Um, so uh, I've been finding them a lot better. It's got a little bit of a bump in the tail, which you can see there in the outlines. So that helps with a bit of pivot, too. Looks um, nice, mate. And I think um, Zoltan's saying yes, please. So if that one's available for sale, give uh, give Zoltan. A <laughs> it is actually because um, Cliff returned this one, this one here, and um, I, I like this one better. <laughs> um, actually, looking at this one, it's very similar to what uh, Ed Hooper was doing twenty years ago with the yep. concave. He used to do the double concave at the nose, drawing it back and having, um, yeah, sort of the the, you're having channels towards the back, but normally set up as a thruster rather than a single. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, because a lot, a lot of things have been done before. And, um, you know, I always remember checking out at the old Mel Comps when I first started doing competitive longboarding. Sean and Newton remember this. Um, I think, what's his name? Uh, Matt most probably knows better. Madonna? Madonna? Um, his boards? Yeah, Madonna. Madonna, yeah. Oh, oh, I remember the first time I seen them uh, out of all the old males, they just blew me away. I was like, oh my gosh, who is this guy? Um, and everyone everyone was sort of winning on him. And um, I always remember he had beautiful tail kick and nice curves and he didn't have more of a piggy outline, they were more cleaner. Um, and I've sort of been inspired by that a little bit too. Um, and like Sean said too, you know, there, there were some guys ahead of their time in that era. Um, and everything's been done before in surfboards as well. Like even the fin here, you know, that's what me and Clint have been playing with at the moment, um, which is very tacky armor style. And um, we're finding this fin's uh, been really, really awesome. Um, livens the boards up. It's uh, very flexy. Nose rod's good. But um, yeah, so it's what very, very flexy. that one, Steve? That 10, 11 inch? This one's uh, 9.5, this one. And um, because it's got a lot of area in it, um, uh, because of that rake, I might be better this way. You know, you can see that rake in it. So you get some good twang out of that, eh? I've got a... Uh... Oh, mate. Actually, the first time um, <laughs> I rode it, I was like, excuse my French here, I was like, holy shit. <laughs> um, it made the board go faster, um, which I like. So I always want speed. Um, and I could serve beach breaks with short borders with that fin on a log. And um, it's, it's sort of good when that happens, as, as you guys all know, when, it, when you put, sort of can blow a short water head you paddle out on an old school single fin, and <laughs> you can hold your own with them, you know what I mean? And I found this fin allowed that to happen more. Mm. So it definitely has some good twang, you know, and just, it, just uh, it made the board feel so much more alive. It was quite freaky. So I'm a big fan of that. But that is uh, Takayama inspired, you know, and, um, and uh, I think that's what Keanu was writing a lot of too. So... Uh, yeah, so yeah, so we're sort of bringing back a few of the old fins. Does look similar to uh, to Kaimana's board from Noosa there as well. It's similar sort of, yeah. a, very rakey and a bit of flex. Now look, poor old Nathan Riverland, our, our junior member. He's uh, sitting down there in Victoria. Nathan, you must have some questions for Stevie. Pick his brains while he's here, mate. 
Yeah, I was just wanting to talk to you, Stevie, about um, how yeah. you manage the whole coronavirus situation. Um, yeah, like, was there any shutdowns, yeah. or how did you how did you fare with it? Or obviously, there's been every, everyone's been surfing, so you might have been. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, it was it was very very weird for me because um, as uh, with a surname like mine, my father's Italian, so I've got family in Italy, and um. I, I knew what was coming, um, <laughs> which was quite freaky. I was just like, holy dolly. Um, uh, yeah, especially when there was a lot of Aussies saying it wasn't real. I was like, oh, my gosh, this is real. Um, so, um, and I had a friend in Spain as well, and he was just like, man, <laughs> shit's going down here. And, um, but um, it was interesting. I was thinking, oh, my gosh, what's going to happen here? And, um, you know, Australia's done very well. I think we dodged a, a pretty good bullet, which is awesome. Um, and but at the beginning, uh, when the sort of they were, were thinking we're going into a full lockdown, so I said to all the guys at the factory, we're just going to have to get every freaking board done. <laughs> um, so we went like madmen, and uh, which was great to be honest, because I also had such a backlog of orders. We caught up on all the orders, um, and uh, you know, and uh, but the scary thing was, is in that time, uh, I think it was a two week period, we got like three orders, and I was like, oh no, this is not good. <laughs> um, but um, then what happened is everyone started surfing. So um, and and with the government handouts too, there's a lot of people buying boards. So it's sort of been good. I wouldn't. I'd say not as busy as before, but it's been it's been good. I just hope it stays. That's all. Um, but yeah, it was a bit of a stress, mate. Especially when you're in business and you got everything on, on the line. It's uh, it was like holy dolly, what's going to happen here? But it seems like we've all we've all fared very well out of it. Yeah, I'm sure. It's interesting because I've been talking a bit to the Victorian shapers down here and everyone's like so backlogged with orders at the moment, like the last few weeks because just everyone's in the water. It's just yeah, it's shockers. It's crazy. But um, yeah. yeah, it was good. It was good for Victoria too because I noticed, I, th- I don't know if I'm right here, but I think the government actually tried to ban surfing, didn't they? But um, the police weren't policing it. Was that correct? Which was great. Sorry, can you repeat that? Sorry, what did you say? Oh, sorry, mate. Um, I just heard, um, you know, someone was saying uh, the government was actually trying to stop surfing there, but it just wasn't getting police, which was awesome. Yeah, they were thinking about it. They actually ended up um, closing the beaches for everything um, in Phillip Island. Um, they ended yeah. they didn't end up doing it here in Torquay, um, but it was definitely on the cards because we had a few weekends where it was just, like, stupidly busy. and Yeah, we had the same in the Gold Coast. And same in WA, everyone can't go to work, they can't do their normal sports, and because they could go surfing, they did. Well, um, they yeah. else. Everything else was locked down. You couldn't go to the pub, you couldn't go to have a coffee or anything. So go to the beach, it's open, it's free, and if it's not open, they can't get me in the water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. you know, especially what they know now too, the beach is most probably the best place for anyone, you know, with a, a situation like that. Nathan works at the uh, the Tullamarine Wave Pool, and we were discussing last week uh, the the balance between longboarders, shortboarders. He reckons no longboarders have, have had a go at the uh, the heavy setting yet. Whereas uh, Jack and myself, and I think judging by Kira's reaction, I think she'd be keen to prove him wrong that longboarders <laughs> can do it. How would what 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 sort of design tweaks would you put on a board which was designed for the chlorine water? Uh, most probably I'd just go with what I'd do, what I'd write in WA on a beach break for there, really, to be honest. Um, yeah, because I've, I've watched, I've seen a lot of footage and that, you know, that to me just reminds me of, the, of a typical West Aussie beach break week. So, yeah. you know, it's like it comes in, yeah. it's that rip and just boom, you know yeah. what I mean? And you need speed and you, you've got to be able to bottom turn and fit in the, uh, in, in the pocket, you know what I mean? Um, and <laughs> HP, you're never going to beat for that. Just like uh, in this picture just here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's, uh, yeah. that's a Macca model. That's, that's the first yeah. Macca model in Western Australia with a tie-dye resin. It and, was, um, too. Yeah, so when I saw the footage at the wave pool and uh, then Nath was saying that the longboarders don't go on the, uh, the extreme setting, I'm like, oh, yeah, give us a go. I don't think yeah. that's it anyway. I haven't, seen, I haven't seen it myself, but maybe someone's done it. No, mate, yeah. you're throwing down the gauntlet now. It's on. Oh, <laughs> I'll join you. I want to do it too. But... Are we going to do a live webcast from the wave pool when it opens? Yeah, well, we're yeah. allowed to travel. Absolutely. Yeah. We'll take it in turns getting waves and the other guys can do the, the podcast from the side bit, of the pool. bit like Noosa Festival, Weeksy, except you were filming. And, and, <laughs> and waves. <laughs> but um, as, as you and I know, Weeksy, uh, the, like, like the Corbett boys and people like that, you know, that, that'd be just like a walk in the park, you know, they'd be used to that. On the HPs that I was doing them years ago, they'd just be, you know, loving that stuff. So, um, yeah, I know, I know.
I, I, I look forward to a time where we can have uh, Aussie nationals or something there where we can get the best longboarders out there showing us what can be done on a longboard. I know the criteria now is got... <laughs> Sean's shaking his head. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't going to happen, is it? <laughs> I hate to think that one day there's the possibility that a world champion may never have surfed in the ocean. Oh, that'd be scary. I'm with you there, Sean. Yeah, look, I, don't, I, I think it's. I think the wave pool is good to refine designs. It's good for yeah. practicing manoeuvres. And I think from a contest point of view, it makes it a level playing field. 100% um, agree. I would, I'd be horrified. I would hate to see a day where a world champion's never been in the ocean. I don't think it will happen. Not in, my, not in our lifetime, anyway. Actually, what I'd love to see, because I think it is a great leveller, um, is you could have a contest where girls compete on an equal footing with the guys in a wave pool because hey you've all got to take your fair turn of the wave there's no hassling um yeah it's it's a great leveler and i really think we could find out then you know, sort of whether girls and guys can compete um against each other equally kira molnar you'll have something to say about that i should think I don't know. I'm intrigued. I, I reckon half the girls out there could compete with the best of the boys. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think they're bigger yeah. hustlers. They hassle more than the guys. Well, you could be no hassling in the wave pool. I feel like sometimes when you're in competition, the girls, like, it can be on. Like, it's brutal. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you can see that from the shore, but in the water sometimes. It's pretty oh, yeah. there's, a few names, there's a few names that jump into my mind straight away when you say that. Um, you're not one of them. You seem you seem to be one of those casual people in the water that lets your that lets your opponents have as many ways as they want. What's going on there? Yeah, it may definitely be to my detriment. Be kind. <laughs> no. Nah. Oh no, it's all good to let your surfing do the talking. I, I find Kira, and um, I must admit, um, some of the girls now, especially the logging criteria, they're like they're surfing like goddesses. You know what I mean? Like. The way they're walking the boards and they're doing turns and everything, you know, I know they could hold it with a lot of the blokes now in that that criteria. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I've, I've said for a long time that, uh, well, not you know, in the time I've been longboarding, it went from you know she's all right for a girl to nowadays it's like she rips. Mm -hmm. uh, oh. and you don't you don't say the for a girl bit at the end. And um, I, I think the highlight, well, the only there hasn't been much competitive highlights this year and there probably won't be a lot more to add to the list, but the two uh, Hawaiian girls from Waikiki coming up in the final of the uh, WSL Pro event at Noosa just shows, I mean, yeah, you've got teenagers barely, well, still in school uh, and number one and two in the world. So I think, uh, Kira, I wouldn't want to be in your shoes from a competitive point of view because it's getting tougher and tougher to get through a heat, huh? Yeah. Yeah, it definitely is. But you know what? Like, you've got to beat the best to be the best. So it's awesome to be able to surf with that level. Yeah. The push is Definitely. Yeah. And uh, look, one of my favourite people to compete against is the man we've got as our guest, Steve Del Rosso. And um, Damien Cook is another one. He always beats me, but I love surfing against him because we do have a bit of fun in the water. Except that Agnes, he cut me off. I've got footage of it too, Damo. Um, <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> I think from a competition, mean, obviously a lot of people watching uh, the show today aren't into competitive longboarding. Steve, what sort of a board should they get? If they're going to get a longboard, they don't want to compete. They just want an all-round one board they can kind of have on hand for whenever they need it. Yeah, I'm just going to pretty much always say the same question a lot of people. It's, it's where they're surfing um, and how they want to surf too. Um, so, you know, if they want to be smooth and, uh, you know, you can't be a log for that, especially new, so, like, it's just log capital. Um, but WA, as you and I know, there's not too many real log-friendly waves, so you want more of an all-rounder um, and uh, a bit more performance-based. Um, so it sort of depends. And then you've got Victoria, too. It's got power with the, uh, you know, the, so you can surf a bit of both there, you know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, the model thing, even for myself, I find uh, people jump on the web page and they sort of get, they do their research and their homework and they uh, pick a model out and, I, and then I speak to them and they, uh, I'm like, what do you want that model for? And they'll tell me why. And I'm like, uh, no, don't get that one, get this one. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, so always speak to your shape, especially experienced ones. You know, this, this, we're pretty lucky in Australia. There's a lot of... Uh, you know, highly experienced shapers um, that have, you know, travelled and surfed the whole country. So, um, you know, it's different boards for different ways. So, uh, 
yeah, that's what I'd say pretty much. It's up to where they're going and how they want to surf. And look, and, and I've, I've, well, if you find a model you like and you can repeat it, that's the good thing about the computer shaping as well. Yeah. But um, we've got all sorts of people tuning in and set, putting up uh, notes and things. Just, Kira, I've just got to ask you a quick question, mate. Um, so this is from Paulette Wainwright. Is she a friend of yours? <laughs> She's my auntie. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> Auntie Paulette. Paulette said to ask you how you broke your board just recently. Is there a special story to that? Oh, look, I was surfing Watala, which I probably shouldn't have had my longboard, but you know what? Yeah, I just wanted to take it out there. And um, and just before I went out, I actually saw Bowie Pollard, who was up here on the Sunshine Coast, and we were having a chat, and he was surfing down the beach, and just like, oh, it's so good. And I was with Kat Hughes as well, actually. And he goes, just before we went out, he's like, oh, just pull in. And then caught a couple of little ones. And then this set came through and I was like, well, I've just got to pull in. Um, and so that's what I did. And Have you got a photo handy of the, of the one you got after that on your, on your little blue shortboard? Um, no, oh, I haven't got that up. I'll just, I'll just, if I did, I'd have it as a screensaver or something because it was pretty oh, Sorry. I could. Nice, nice clean barrels all up and down the beach there. Yeah, yeah, that one was um, good. Hold on, I'll just bring up, or oh, I've got my Instagram. <laughs> Hold on, I'll just see if I can share the screen oh, with you. Well, let's tell them your Instagram, Addy. Oh, yeah, Kira Mola. <laughs> here we go. Hold on a sec. Cue the followers. Oh, here we go. Oh, there it is. Oh, sick. Cave woman. There you go. That's good. Yeah. How's that? How's that? Uh, pig dog style. Yeah, the drop me at the back. That's yeah. a nice clean drop me pig dog. I love it. Uh, yeah, yeah, there's a couple of shots before that where I was like, looked like I was definitely not going to make it, but <laughs> I did. <laughs> so it's pretty so good. That one. Now or what? He's taking your photos. He's making your posters that's behind you. I know. Ian yep. Ballin is everywhere. Good photographer. <laughs> now, guys, before we go to our wrap-up for the surf uh, report for the weekend, we've come up with an idea during the week amongst our, our presenter group. We're going to have a wave of the week, a photo of the week competition starting with next week's episode three. So if you get some great photos, uh, submit those onto the Facebook page and we'll come up with a winner. But, uh, Stevie, we have, to, we have to choose a winner to get us a sample pack of the uh, new formula, Huey's Choice Surf Wax. Cha -ching, cha -ching, Good cha -ching. wax. Good wax. Uh, so, uh, who's which? Which of those questions you were asked today? Did you like the sound of the most, mate? Who, who should we give some wax to? Oh gosh, actually, they were all good questions. Um, I'm lost there, mate. To be honest, um, <laughs> uh, you know, there wasn't any. Yeah, uh, Michael Cotty already gets it for free from me, so don't choose him. He does. I, yeah, I quite like the question about whether whether you prefer to shape high performance or loggers. I thought that was kind of true. A, a That's good a good answer. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's a short border. Is he? Oh, no, no, he's no, that's not good then. No. <laughs> gave him that longboard last year, remember? And he's been surfing that. I'm always just asking. He's that. a longboarder now. All right, so, Shawnee, that's your mate up there on the coast, is it? Yeah, that's Andrew, and he's um, he's on one of uh, Nigel's twin fins. Oh, those Beckham twins. Oh, cool. Yeah. So, look, I've got, any of you other panellists, before we go to the surf report, do you have any final questions for Steve before, before we uh, go to the surf report? Yep. In uh, the scheme of surf history, uh, who would be the most iconic shaper that you'd look up to from the golden era of the 60s and the 70s? Midget. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. 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 yeah, I had a good relationship with Midget. Midget. Um, I use all these blanks as well. And, um, yeah, we had so many in-depth conversations and um, always loved chatting to him because uh, he knew his materials. Uh, and um, I, there was one day there I realised uh, one of his boards was, was EPS epoxy back in the era, stringless. And, um, you know, so I rang him up straight away. I seen that in a bit of history research and, you know, he could give me the full rundown. And, um, yeah, I, yeah like, I think... And he loved progression too, you know. Yeah, um, yeah he just loved it. So, um, yeah, he's definitely the one in that, from that era. Oh, very... Yeah, good answer for sure. Yeah. Like that. Beautiful. So look, I'll kick off the I'll kick off the uh, the surf report this time around, just because. Uh, well, we started with Kira last time, and she can't be always in charge. So, um, although she did, she did the best job of it. So I think you guys should be seeing my uh, screenshot there. It's a pretty short, oh, pretty Jesus. short surf report for WA this week. This is Margaret River, and you'll see uh, 
The swell size is 5.5 metres for the most mm. part. Um, decent size swell, but if we come down to the wind in kilometres an hour, 45, 35, 25, it's windy and it's onshore. So WA, it's not going to be a great weekend. Over to you, Nathan Riverland. <laughs> I'll just share my screen. Give me two secs. You guys see that? Yep. Yep. So, yeah, we've had a pretty good run lately. I can't remember a time. It hasn't been good for like the last six weeks. But, um, yeah, we've got offshore conditions tomorrow and uh, Sunday as well, north, northerlies and northwest. Um, and then we've got a big spike in the swell coming like Monday night. So it's going to get up to, I think, about eight foot. So um, bring your guns, I reckon. Ooh. Nine foot, nine foot on at one in the morning on uh, Tuesday. So yeah, um, yeah, it's looking like it's going to be pretty good this weekend. Um, pretty much anywhere will be the go. This is just the report for Janjuk and Winky. Um, mm. but is that big enough for Lawn and some of those? Uh, yeah, um, definitely Lawn Monday, Tuesday. Like the winds, um, probably not going to be the best for it. Northwest. Um, it generally does like a southwest as well. So it really might, might still be all right. But um, definitely um, people will probably be charging bells, I'm sure, on those bigger days, no doubt. Nice one. Thanks for that, Nate. And around to you then, Waxhead, Matty Chinoski, what have we got for, for a uh, southern New South Wales area? Yeah, well, we've actually got a little bit of swell on the way. But the next couple of days are going to be nice longboarding conditions. There's heaps of sand along the whole northern beaches. And I heard right up the coast, um, amazing banks that are starting to form just in the last 48 hours. So uh, as you can see, can you see my screen all right? Yep. Yeah. For the Saturday and the Sunday, these are all uh, offshore to sideshore winds all day long. Uh, with a little east race mix. This is the period, so six, eight, six, five. So it'd be mostly logging waves uh, with good clean winds. But um, next, just after the weekend, we've got another uh, low pressure system moving up the coast. Uh, we'll probably hit Tassie on Sunday and Monday. Uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, next week. We'll probably get downgraded, but looks like we're going to get another, you know, six to eight feet of swell, which will be uh, really exciting. So Beautiful. And uh, look, I know that I've just noticed that uh, Jack Entwistle is actually logged on and watching. So Slacker takes the night off, but he's watching us. G'day, mate. You can jump in if you want. Hey, Jack. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you what, we'll give, we'll give Jack a couple of minutes to maybe jump in to do the Byron report. Sean, do you want to give us the uh, the Gold Coast uh, rundown? Yeah, I'm trying, but I... <laughs> Come on, you got this. No, I'm no good. <laughs> can, can nail it. All right, yeah. you, you try and get yourself sorted. Um, Kira, we know that you've got the, uh, you've got the technology bizzo going. Oh, no, look, he's nearly got it. Hang on, he's no, close. There we go, there we go. <laughs> oh, he's doing Jack's report. Yeah, hold on. I'll find okay. something somewhere. I've got Byron up on my screen as well. Yeah, okay. Because I was doing jacks. But yeah, no, I haven't got the Goldie. But the Goldie's pretty much like Byron. It's only going to be small most of the weekend. It is going to be clean and offshore. Um, and that, but uh, I think you'll be looking on the Goldie at the southern points once again. But uh, don't expect it to be more than two or three foot. All right, mate, do you want to just turn off that screen share there so we don't see all the uh, dodgy files on your desktop? Okay. Yay! <laughs> hey, um, one thing too, this morning I uh, ran into the girls from the Surf Witches. I don't know if you have them uh, anywhere else. They are a group of uh, young ladies that surf mainly Currumbin. Uh, they've been going less than a year and they've got 1,200 members. Whoa! Wow. So big That's shout you. out to them. They wanted to uh, tell us that they're, they're expanding all along the coast, but they uh, are teaching etiquette and everything so that it won't be a problem. Um, I'll be uh, honest there too, Sean. Um, yeah, the, the girls, the surfing community of women on the Gold Coast is absolutely huge at the moment. Getting so, so many girls coming in, ordering boards, all ages too. All ages and abilities and... yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's and they're all frothers. The whole lot of them, they all come in the shop and they're just frothing. They're so happy and stoked and full of energy. It's good. Yeah. Yeah, I think 2020 is the year of the lady surfers. They've, all, they've really come into their own this year. Um, obviously, on a Surfing Australia level, Surfing WA has been doing some great stuff at the Aravena uh, Winery at the museum there, the Surf Museum. They've done a uh, big display on women in Western Australian surfing. Uh, 
g'day to uh, Jody and Sam and all the crew got involved in that. Now, I guess uh, we have we have to finish off though with you up to, in, in Queensland, Molnar, up on the Sunshine Coast. How, how's it looking up there? Is, is oh, yeah. it I'd just like to say I've just had two more surf reports live by Roger saying greetings from the Philippines. It's flat there, just in case you were wondering. Okay. Um, and Bert Berger <laughs> saying that there's a uh, swell coming in Thailand also. Wow. Um, and as for Noosa, I will just bring up that surf forecast. Speaking of Thailand, it's, uh, we just had Bert Berger. Yeah. You are yeah. a bit late, Bert, Bert but uh, <laughs> Bert was saying today they've got a great swell coming in Thailand. But you'll be able to watch the full replay in a moment, Bert, with the book that comes up once the, uh, the live stream's finished. We might even be able to get Bert on one of these days to talk about a Yeah, definitely. Um, great. So the swell this week in Noosa is not quite as good as it was the last week. So I've just brought up uh, the point side here. So it's looking like south, south, east. So um, the points are looking like we'll have a little bit of swell. As long as we can get a little bit of easterly in that southeast swell as well, it might come round there. Um, Monday, Tuesday is looking like the open beach is going back southwest again. So we're hitting up like sunshine and that sort of thing. And then it turns back to the southeast and towards the end of next week, looking like we've got a bit of swell coming. So it could be really good. Nice. And could you stop putting up all those photos? It's sickening seeing all that when it's freezing cold out. <laughs> you guys are out enjoying yourself. Yeah, I'm still in a steamer. I'm a wuss. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, there's there's uh, not much option other than the steamer in WA at the moment. So, like I say, Bert's saying the, the swells just started pumping in Thailand. So um, I'm going to get over there and visit. He's been putting up some annoyingly good-looking uh, wave shots as well. But uh, all right, so it looks like the east coast going to have a pretty and the south coast going to have a pretty good weekend. South Australia, we don't talk about because you know there's no surf in South Australia from what the cactus locals tell me. Um, WA, of course, is going to be a miserable weekend, but looking good for Monday, as I've had pointed out by a couple of friends. Dave Fraser says, "G'day, Sean." G'day, Dave. Hope he's recuperated from. He had a bit of a health issue. Hopefully, he's all on top of that now. Mate, it's uh, always good to hear when we have our surfing buddies back to fighting fit. I'm not one of those at the moment. My back is caning me so hopefully a few more stretches and i'll be able to get back into it looks like jack's realized that he's uh, run out of time so he's not going to jump on this week but he'll be back with us next week we haven't even decided who our special guest is next week sean have you got any ideas um I'll put you on the spot <laughs> yeah hey why don't we try and get someone like jb on from pacific longboard magazine yeah jb yeah. johnny brazen all right yep yeah, he's a legend and he uh, does a lot for our sport so um how about, all right, we'll put it out there. John Brazen's going to be our special guest next week at six o'clock on the Oz Longboarding episode. <laughs> I'll speak to him and just make sure he hasn't got an issue about to come out because otherwise he'll be under the pump. But um, I'm pretty sure he'll be keen uh, to yeah tell us all about how it's going and that. That'd be great. And another John that's been supporting longboarding just lately, John Finlay from World Safaris. I spoke to him yesterday with regards to putting together the highlights video from the Noosa Festival. And he tells me that even though obviously people can't travel overseas, they're about to launch their surf trips out to the Great Barrier Reef. So that's something for our Queensland friends to keep an eye on perhaps. Has anyone else got anything else to add before we uh, sign off for the night? I feel like I could keep going for hours. It's great chatting with all you guys. It was, enjoyed it. Question, is there any questions we didn't ask you, Steve, that you wish we had them? No, not really, mate. It's, it's been good. Yeah, all the questions were really good tonight. It was, yeah, enjoyed it, mate. All right, mate. Great to see your face. Yeah. He's a very, very good man. So, look, on behalf of all the crew, I'll put us back to the gallery view so you can see everybody. Guys, thanks so much for joining us wherever you are around Australia and around the country. For those of you who just tuned into the live webcast, 6 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time every Friday. Of course, the full replay will be available right after this. And as of today, we also have a YouTube channel. So the full high-definition video of this recording will be uploaded tonight and you can watch that on the Oz Longboarding YouTube channel tomorrow. So on behalf of myself, Sean, Kira, Nathan, Matt, Steve, and in his absence, the Twiz, thanks for joining us uh, wherever you are. We look forward to seeing you again this time or perhaps a little bit earlier. Hey, Bert, next Friday afternoon. And, uh, <laughs> thank you, Nick. Thank you to Steve Del Rosso for Clearwater Surfboards. If yes, you... guys, I was having a sneaky bear. <laughs> <laughs> Get on the boat yeah. with some of those designs. <laughs> Come on and uh, hit Stevie up. I'm sure he'll make one up for you as well. Waxhead, Riverland, Molnar. Sean, same time, same bat channel next week. Stevie, hope you tune in as well. And for wherever you're watching, thanks for your company. Yeah.
We look forward to seeing you right here next week for episode three, Meet the Publisher on Oz Longboarding, Australia's only longboarding podcast. Been a great time. Thanks, guys. Big waves. You! Thank you, to Mama. What is it, everyone? <laughs> and that's it for this time. So we'll uh, get it there. I'm in use, got the news, the long one.